in case you can't, those of you on YouTube haven't guessed this week. Um, Ash died yesterday. I died. I am a dead person. I have actually come back from the grave just to do this horrible show. That's how much this show means. He died yesterday and he's still on the air. You're welcome. Ugh, yeah, uh, my throat. You do kind of sound like Bill Clinton. So anyway, um, I'm a bit of a mess tonight. I apologize, but the show must go on. We'll see. Maybe just having me stuck talking like this is, is, is entertainment enough. Was that Loki? That was Loki. That I just, sounded like a spaceship opening. He makes Muppet noises. <laughs> he oh. makes Muppet noises. Hi, Loki. What happens if I bark at him? He can't hear you. you just have oh, a you have a headphone in. Because yeah. Simba and I had a whole conversation the other day. Like, Simba just walks around yelling at me. And so I started answering him. And he was like, meow, 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 meow. He does that, too. Had a great time. All right. Well, hey, you want to take a crack at the intro? You're more than welcome to. Let's let's get the intro going here. You, you... I don't. No, no, no. You, you want. Here you go. Here you go. Intro's running. See what you can do with it. Oh, God. Each week, Catherine and the Radio Dead Air audience. I don't remember what comes after that. They send us shit. For a bit, we like to call what the fuck is wrong with you. I think I got it pretty close. <laughs> oh, God damn. I know it's longer than that. It is. It is a bit long, but you you, you tried. I got the beginning and the end. Those are the only parts anybody pays attention to. Nobody listens to the middle. Mm. Oh, stupid. Put that out. album. Hide all your shitty songs in the middle. <laughs> all right. Well, let's uh, let's get started this week. This comes to us from uh, let's see India. Wow. Shush! <laughs> Shush! Yikes! Puppy is just—he's just being an attention little bugger. He's very worried about you. He is not. He was. He's like human. Human, did you know that you're dead? <laughs> human, human, you died. So, okay. Do you remember the first time you ever flew on an airplane? Uh, well, no, because I was two. All right. But... I flew to Ireland the first time when I was two. So, no. Uh, speaking of airplanes. Go away. We don't need any. Thank you. <laughs> no, wait, wait. I remember I was, I was, uh, I was in college. And there was, you, you know, it's it's kind of a new experience. It's kind of exciting when you, you first fly and you're like, wow, there's all sorts of neat things on here. But generally, you get the idea of what's going on pretty quickly. Um, This guy. Giant, giant tube up in the air. Very scary. This guy did not catch on quite so quick. Man sparks panic on India flight after confusing <gasps> rear door of plane with toilet. Oh, no. Faster flying for the first time sparked panic on a flight in India when he tried to open the rear exit of the plane, mistaking it for the door to the toilet. You got to really not be paying attention. There are signs. Yeah. On the cabin crew for the Go Air flight from Delhi to Patna, Northeast India, were forced to wrestle the man away from the door. And he was persuaded to take a seat for the remaining flight before being handed over to airport security on arrival. 
They didn't let him pee? <laughs> I, I just, I'm trying to imagine this guy getting so indignant. Everyone is telling him, no, no, don't do that. And he's like, fuck you, I gotta pee. Like there's pictograms and the handle is bright red and like... There is an awful lot of do not fuck with this on the doors that they don't want you to fuck with at 35,000 feet because everyone will die. It says fucking emergency. That does not mean an emergency in your pants. No. It's a different kind of emergency. Also, there's windows next to all the exterior doors. So, like, where are you going? (laughs) Maybe he thinks the bathroom's just really big. Like, do you think the bathroom hangs off the side of the plane? (laughs) That's not how it works, bro. It breaks a whole new definition of pissing in the wind. Yeah. (laughs) I I, I just love the fact they had to wrestle him from the door. And I'm a nerve. I'm a nervous flyer already. So this would I. Oh, my God. I'd be, I'd be having the vapors. The, just, the indignity of the motherfucker to be like, God damn it, I'm going to the bathroom. No, you're not. You don't That's tell right. me. It's over here. No, you don't tell me what to do. That way is death. <laughs> that way is the bathroom. That way is the bathroom. That way is death. I just, come on. I, uh, when everyone, every single person on the same airplane is freaking the fuck out, maybe, just maybe, you're maybe, wrong. Maybe you're doing something wrong. And speaking, you should assess your surroundings. Speaking of doing something wrong, this is surprisingly not the TSA. Although you'd think it was. This one comes from Britain, actually, and get ready for everyone to be pissed off, because I read this and I was instantly pissed off. Airport apologized after reporters, after workers reportedly told a teen girl it would be, quote, her fault if her plane crashed. The incident was apparently prompted by the insulin she needs to treat her diabetes. 13, a 13-year-old girl was reportedly told by airport security that it would be her fault if the plane crashed. Her, the culprit, her life-saving insulin medication. Polly Holland, who has type 1 diabetes, was traveling on vacation with her parents, Joanne and Simon, through Manchester Airport in England. When they say security flagged a liquid in her carry-on luggage, the liquid turned out to be her insulin. Family was reportedly asked to remove the medication and place it in plastic bags, but they were worried that would contaminate it. Holly's required to carry the medication on her at all times. You know, diabetes. Yeah, kind of important kind of thing. A number of security staff reportedly told the Hollands that, quote, the insulin could make the plane crash and that an accident would be, quote, her fault. I didn't know insulin could bring down a plane. Do they think 13 year old girls carry little, little bottles of nitroglycerin designed disguised as insulin to blow up planes? Well, there's a quick way to find out if it is or not. Just throw it against something. If it doesn't explode, you're an asshole. Well, the bottles are glass though. So if it doesn't explode, you've killed her. And you're an asshole. <laughs> like that's, that's a high risk maneuver is what I'm saying. <laughs> Not for an asshole. I mean, yeah, diabetics, you have to have your fucking insulin on you. You usually have you usually have certification for that. They give you a little card. You wear the medical ID bracelet, whatever. But you need that shit. I- and by the way. I could be wrong. Maybe people come, maybe people carry big old bottles of insulin, but generally they are well under the two or three ounce limit. Insulin, because you don't, you're not injecting a fucking quart. They're like smaller than a nail polish bottle. 
I remember one time I got on a plane with a screwdriver about this size on accident. It was in my carry-on luggage. And, and they were like, sir, you can't fly with that. You can't, you can't fly with that. It's dangerous. I'm like, are you scared? I'm going to take the plane apart. Well, yeah, but 9-11, they, all they had was box cutters. You could stab somebody in the throat with that. It's a weapon. Dan has, because Dan's an old goth, he has his old leather jacket. And on his old leather jacket, he has this cord that his army unit got for killing Nazis in France. <laughs> and everybody in that unit, like, obviously, he didn't fight in World War II. He's not that old, but... uh Sure he's not, Tara. <laughs> sure he's not. But everyone who's in that unit gets the cord because their unit got a commendation for killing Nazis in France. To me, it kind of looks like a hookah hose. But I'm not supposed to say that because it's very important. <laughs> so he has that wrapped around the arm of his leather jacket. And I guess he got stopped in an airport and the TSA tried to take it away. And he was like, no, you fuck you, you can't have it. And they're like, sir, it can be used as a weapon. Like, you can't have it. And he's fighting with them. And this was in a post-9-11 world, obviously. And one of the fucking soldiers carrying a giant rifle in the airport finally walked over and was like, no, you gotta you got let him go. <laughs> I, fuck it. How in God's name would insulin make a plate? Was she going to pour it in the fuel tank? Yeah, and... And it's gonna be it's probably this much. I mean, god damn it. And That's I a thing to tell a 13 year old too. Well, if everybody dies, it's because you have diabetes. <laughs> That's awful, but it's it's what it, I mean, just I I would expect this shit from the TSA because they're a bunch of fucking clowns. This was England. Hands on, he needs to show us his Nazi killing cord, I will tell him. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. I'm actually a little sad Dan's not here for this one, because this would be right. He, he, like, just went to bed. He tried to hold out, but he's really tired, and he, like, just went to bed. This one would be right up his alley. Um, you know, when you build something, when you build something significant, you have to... It's not just a matter of you go in place and you slap up some wood and timber and concrete and you're done. You have to do planning. You have to do math. You have to figure out what sort of surface you're building. You have to do all sorts of things. You have to line up load-bearing walls. And that's normal. The thing doesn't crumble. And that's normally how professionals do things. That is not how these people did things. Bridge that collapsed six hours after opening was built without investigation of riverbed. Oh, my God. The Reeve of the M Rural Municipality of Clayton says the bridge that collapsed six hours after it opened was built without having geotechnical investigation done on the riverbed it stood on. An expert, a bridge building expert calls that approach, quote, irregular. That's probably the polite way of saying <laughs> fuck up. That's awfully polite. It's, quote, it seems like something under the riverbed let go and a row of pilings sunk. And the, yeah, you got to figure out what you're putting those into and if it will hold them. This is what the guy in charge of the place said. Um, he, he believes the contractor and engineer did everything right. And this was a, quote, act of God. I don't know who's to blame, but I figured God built most of this for us. Stop blaming God when you fuck up. That's rude. That's, that's very rude. You know what else God gave us? Science. Math. Big, big old brains to figure out if you're putting your pylons in mud. You check that shit. You go, you look, you see how far, how stable the goddamn ground is under the water. Pretty important. It's kind of a big deal. Nope. Sorry. God fucked up. Not us. 
Oh, God just didn't want us to have a bridge there. That's how you get chlamydia. God wanted you to pass calculus before you became an engineer, is what God wanted. God, I mean, this guy's going, it was an act of God. And God's up there going, the fuck it was. <laughs> right? The stuff we blame on God, man. Like, how pissed would you be if you were God or Jesus? Let's not even get into Jesus. Like, the shit we blame on Jesus. The two of them have just got to be up there like, I never said shit about that. <laughs> what the fuck? Like, what? I was not consulted. I did not get a fee. This is not my department. You are not my supervisor. And like, technically, if you're a very devout theologian and all that, there's dogmatic law, which is, you know, anybody who saw the Kevin Smith movie knows whatsoever you hold true on earth, I will hold true in heaven. And I just think about that sometimes and I bet he regrets that shit. <laughs> I really bet he regrets that shit. Like, man, I didn't really realize how dumb y'all were going to get. I thought I could trust you to just, I gave you 10 rules. They were not hard. Thought we'd keep it simple. Um, yeah, the guy said that, uh, the issue was underwater, five underwater pilings and the whole five of them just went straight down. Boom, four feet. So that tells me something underneath the ground happened. I don't know what it was. They don't know what it was. Nobody knows what it is. Hey, you know how you might have known what it was? If you had a fucking expert check before you built the goddamn bridge. Oh, but see, and this is a quote. You can't drill through water, he said. You can't do it. You can't take underground samples. Which is weird, because I feel like every other bridge that's still standing, they've figured it out. Like, I don't think every other bridge in the world is just standing by dumb fucking luck. Somebody going to jail. There's a hundred bridges just in New York. <laughs> I don't think they're all standing on dumb fucking luck. It's a miracle nobody was on this bridge when it went down. It's a fucking miracle. Yeah. Just look at that. That bridge just noped out. It's it's yeah. like the, the bridge just decided, no, we're not I mean, doing At least it's not very high, it doesn't look like. Still. I mean, it wouldn't be like if the GWB caved in. Which I have issues when I have to ride the lower level of GWB because I'm like. Like if I fall the 200 feet from the top level, I'm still going to die, but I want to have somebody fall on top of me first. And I don't know which is worse. And I, I sit there doing that math every time I take that bridge. Well, speaking of driving. When, how, all right. All right. Your voice is getting better as we go, weirdly. This is, well, I'm, I'm working a little bit more, and I, I guess this... I'm, th I'm therapeutic. I guess the stuff that's that's on it is getting worked off a little bit, so... Which is nasty, because there's... Uh, let's not talk about the stuff on my throat. That's, <laughs> that's not a good topic for right now. So wait, when did you first start learning to drive? I was a late driving bloomer. I didn't start learning till I was 19. And then a week after I got the license, I totaled my car and went and ended up going back to college and was totally phobic and had to be retaught at 21. Because then I was afraid to drive. I started learning when I was 16, I believe. And I, my dad took me to the parking lot. We did that whole Sunday morning thing. Go, yeah, you know. Um... This, however, is a novel approach to teaching kids to drive. Um, and also, I would say, a premature one. Indiana school bus driver caught on video allegedly allowing kids as long, young as 11 to drive her vehicle. Okay. Northwest Indiana school bus driver has been arrested after she allegedly let three students ages 11, 13, and 17 drive her vehicle. The bus. The bus. Not her fucking no. Nissan Versa. The bus. The bus. Incident was caught on video and posted on Twitter. 
According to police statements, Joandra McAtee, 27, let the children drive her bus Thursday as she dropped students off after school. All right, so she didn't even wait for everybody to be off the bus. Right, she had a bus full of kids. And there's an 11-year-old driving. Now, I, okay. I don't know if you've seen 11-year-olds, but they're normally not really tall. No, and bus steering wheels are big. They're not like... There's, yeah, that's not safe. There's also, you know, it's a big diesel engine. It's not an automatic. There's shifting okay. involved. And I, it doesn't, doesn't cut turns really easy either. And even better, all right, you're a bus driver. You know every single one of these little motherfuckers has a phone. Yeah. How did you, how... How did you think they were not going to send this to fucking everybody? You idiots. Kids these days live on social media, and we can't conceive of that because that wasn't our life. But kids these days, like my nieces and nephews have never not had an online presence because their parents and us have been posting pictures of them since they were born. Like... We, we, I know people that make Facebook pages for their kids, like, as soon as those kids are born, and I think that's weird. We didn't think this shit through. No. I, I just... Why? The reboot of the Magic School Bus is really messed up. <laughs> uh, just, I... I mean, it's kind of amazing nobody got hurt. Yes. That, that's, you, you don't, there's a reason we don't let 11-year-olds drive. They're very <laughs> small. They're very small and, <clears throat> and, and, and they're crazy. Children are insane. According to Dan, who is a psychologist, your brain doesn't actually develop the ability to fully comp comprehend consequences until like age 25. Right. So it's a little scary that we're letting little fuckers drive at 16 anyway. That explains a fuckload. But at 11, <clears throat> you're insane. Like, you're a narcissistic little shit who thinks that God cuts the crusts off your sandwich for you. You don't understand how the world works. Don't bring God into this. He's too busy fucking up bridges. That's true. He's yeah. And this person is 27, so her brain had developed enough to understand consequences. She, she was old enough to have developed the comprehension of consequences, yes. You just imagine the little shit. It's like, okay, I got getting her phone out and fucking catching Pokemon while trying to drive the bus. That's what a kid would fucking do. Like, I have nieces that are 13 and 12 and a nephew who's 13. They're not large humans. <laughs> like, they're not tiny, but they're not large humans. Like, they shouldn't be driving fucking anything because they're small. Oh, yes. And they're crazy. You're, she, this woman is lucky. She's facing charges of neglect of a dependent, a felony, and was fired. You're she's lucky. lucky nobody's dead. Yes. But, you know, there are worse people. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. And this this lady, gee, this is... I feel like this was just trying too hard for for the kids to think you're cool. Like, you get roped into some shady shit if you really want kids to think you're cool. Well, let's move on to Oregon. And we have... You know what? Not only do we have people doing the same shit over and over, they like to one-up each other. I mean, yeah, that's what we do. Like, that's what humans do. Oregon woman steals ambulance as medics perform CPR, goes on wild 30-mile joyride. 
And that bitch is smiling in the picture. Let, let's take a look at, at the mugshot first, because I think that tells a story here. She had a good day. She the did person doing the CPR didn't. Sure, Christy Lynn Woods, 37, may have boosted an ambulance while paramedics performed CPR on an unconscious woman in Southern Oregon. Sure, she then led police officers, sheriff's deputies, and state troopers on a high-speed chase up Ice Interstate 5 for 30 miles, ambulance lights flashing the whole way, and yes, she is accused of ramming a cop car off the freeway as her speedometer hit 85 miles an hour. But seated and handcuffed in the back of a patrol car Sunday, Woods apparently wanted to know what all the fuss was about. Quote, I was a good fucking driver. I didn't try to hurt anybody. Further, Woods seems to think the whole thing wasn't her fault. Quote, why did they leave it unlocked? Did you learn in kindergarten that some things aren't yours? And that even if they're available, if they're not yours, you don't take them? Did you learn that in kindergarten? Because I did. That's not yours. It doesn't matter if little Susie left it out on her desk. It's not yours. Let's start with the fact that this wasn't just an ambulance that was parked somewhere. This was an ambulance parked somewhere while paramedics are working. They're they were actively performing CPR. Yes. They probably needed the shit in there. And they also need the ambulance when they're done to take that person to a fucking hospital. Yes. Kind of important. It's, That's probably why they left it unlocked. It's not like a cab. There's not going to be another one in 20 minutes. They need that one. And I, can you just imagine the paramedic calling it? Yeah, we need another ambulance. What happened? Just send a fucking another ambulance. You don't want to know. I. Uh, and then to drive an ambulance 85 miles an hour and ram a cop car. That is not you good. That cop car careening over the median. By the way. Shaved the light bar off the top of the vehicle. It completely shattered the windshield. And they don't even say if the other poor lady was okay. I just you you asshole. You can the, the mugshot is pure asshole. Piss, she reportedly said. I'm going to prison. Yes, you goddamn are. The fuck did we're, th this you don't get it. You don't get an uh, you, you don't get a, a mulligan on this shit. What was the thought process here? Well, I'm bored, and I don't know. I, you know what? A movie's so expensive. I'll just make one myself. But this ambulance is free. The ambulance is free. So I, I'm a good driver. If you're going 85 in an ambulance and you hit a cop car, you're not a good driver. You're not. You are not a fucking good driver. You're not. You're, you're, you're maybe in Grand Theft Auto, but you know that game needs to go but away. Grand Theft Auto is not a LARP. <laughs> it's, that game just needs to go away. I'm so, You know what? I'm sure I've played it. It's fun, but was it worth it? Was it really worth all this? No. The cost-benefit analysis of Grand Theft Auto, I would have to say the game's just not worth it. It wasn't that good. <laughs> Let's end this week with a happy story. Let's please. This made me so happy that, you know what? This is fantastic. I love this story. Who wants a smile? I'm thinking monkeys. Oh, Terry, you know me so well. <laughs> Zoo monkeys beat up burglar, leave him with multiple injuries and prison sentence. 
A drunk man from New Zealand round up in bad shape after breaking into Wellington Zoo to catch a squirrel monkey. In April 7th, John Owen Casper, 23, snuck through the gates of the Wellington Zoo and proceeded to cut through two padlocks to enter the squirrel monkey enclosure. Casper's intention was to steal a monkey for his girlfriend, but he ended up in a physical fight with the small primates instead. Monkeys will fuck your shit up. The, alter nice. the altercation left Casford with a broken leg, two broken teeth, a sprained ankle, multiple bruises, and a prison sentence. I like how they word that, like, the monkeys put him in prison. Like, he landed on the planet of the apes, and he's in, like, he's in a little cell in the monkey enclosure. <laughs> like he's in monkey prison. They had a little trial. Reality Breaker in the channel went, Apes together strong! <laughs> don't fuck with the monkeys. I, I don't, you know what? I don't blame Your them. Your girlfriend wants a monkey as a pet. You need to acquire that from a place that breeds them for pets. Because zoo animals? Not pets! No, Not domesticated. I, I don't care if the monkeys beat him up. He deserved it. He did. He had that coming. I am not an animal. I am a free man. You got, monkeys are not your friend. Do you, we did the story when a bunch of monkeys murdered the fucking mayor of a city in India. They threw that fucker off a balcony. <laughs> they, they monkeys are, will fuck your shit up. You don't just fuck with them. The, the, okay, the judge, oh, the, this is priceless. Quote, I don't know what happened in the squirrel monkey enclosure. The squirrel monkeys know. You say you couldn't find them. and I don't speak squirrel, the judge continued. What I do know is that by daybreak, the monkeys were distressed. Two of them were injured. You had a broken leg. You targeted a living creature. Also, the zoo and police thought one of them escaped, but one of them would just went and hid. None of them escaped. Even though the door was wide open this whole time. And look at the picture. Look at these little guys. Yeah, this is, when we say a bunch of monkeys, people are thinking like, oh, like baboons or something. No. No, he, they're like they're like this big. He got and beat up by him up. a bunch of these little fellas. I mean, they are really cute. <laughs> yeah, but that the, doesn't mean you should have them. I really, really think hippos are fucking adorable. That doesn't mean I should go to the zoo and get one. I joke about it, but that would be an incredibly stupid and irresponsible thing to do. Yes, they broke his leg. They fucked him up. And I know we normally don't do stories where people get hurt unless it was their own damn fault yeah. for doing something stupid. Don't mess with the monkeys. They, they knew what you was doing. They're like, hey, man, put Tom down. No, you fucking put Tom down. That's my brother. You fucking put Tom down right now. Don't you now do I'm that. Now I'm picturing the monkeys as like the entire cast of Supernatural. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I don't know. You put Tom down. We will fuck you up. Also, apparently he was very drunk. When do it. so another another good thing don't go don't go to the zoo drunk no that's not good for anybody mm -mm. why would you go to the zoo drunk i don't understand why so many people go to the zoo and think that wall and moat aren't meant for me i should go in there that's a place i belong that's safe i love the door was open they the put a wall and a fucking moat the door was open the whole night, but none of them left. They made damn sure that motherfucker wasn't going anywhere. They're probably guarding the door, keeping him in. Oh, no, mother you, you stay in. You stay in. <laughs> you in our house now. Yeah. Look at me. I'm the human now. <laughs> that's, that's the first thing we learned this week. Don't. 
don't fuck with the monkeys. They they have no tolerance for your bullshit. They, these are not domesticated animals. Hi, Grady. Hi, Grady. Grady. I have no pets. They know, I swear, because Peggy and Dottie were all running wild in here. And then I started getting set up and it's fucking ghost town. Simba is in the back of my closet and I'm going to have to remove him to put him to bed somehow. But, you know. We've learned that GTA was a bad idea. It was a mistake. It's, I had my fun with it, but we should have quit while we were ahead. Yeah. We've learned that there's a reason we don't let kids drive. They are very small. And crazy. Yeah, that too. They're little tiny crazy people. We've learned that math is not witchcraft. <laughs> I mean, I kind of think so. But that's just because I don't get it. Don't blame God if you don't know how to use a protractor. Yeah, I'm just dumb. I guess God wanted the bridge to say, no, God wanted you to count with your fucking fingers, you idiot. God wanted you to hire an engineer. We've learned that insulin cannot make a plane crash. Not unless the plane's hypoglycemic. Which, that's not how airplanes work. Very few airplanes are. Very it's very few. rare. Yeah, it is not, not an everyday occurrence. No. And finally, we've learned the sign, read fucking signs. <laughs> okay, if it's a big sign that says emergency, it means you. Yeah. It, it's, it's, you just read. For five, it's not even just that. They, they you don't put, even have to read. They put pictograms. They, you can't understand cartoons. The world has been made idiot proof. You and don't even have to read words anymore. There is no such thing as idiot proof. Obviously. We, 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 we are a testament to that every goddamn <laughs> yeah. week. That's true. If this shit was idiot proof, we wouldn't have nothing to say. Yeah. Which I kind of would like nothing to say this week, but no. We'll always have a business. Look what you sons of bitches made me do. I would have liked one week to shut the fuck up, but oh no, you had to piss off the monkeys. <laughs>